Paradise. Uh, we're going to follow up on this belt ranking system <clears throat> um, locks that I've been doing for beginners and people who are trying to progress up through there. <clears throat> I wanted to touch base on a, a few things, um, you know, because I don't do the 140s or the number fives or number threes or M5s or even the 570s that much, but doing this recently has helped me because I've <clears throat> Uh, learned that I don't need to just run through my practice locks, um, the 1100s or the LOTOs, and I tend to always just really go to the 1100s because I really like them, and uh, I'm really good at them, so I just tend to always do that. So now I've got a little bit of a different system set up to, to do my practice locks, which we'll touch on later. Um, <clears throat> but the you know if you've got like a 140 or a number three or a number five or an M5, whatever you've got. If you only have like a, a couple of locks, you may be feeling like, oh man, I've got to, you know, I don't want to keep picking this thing over and over again. Because um, <clears throat> that creates bad habits and you get to only know how to open that particular lock and you already know it's binding order. So you're not really increasing your skills. So what can you do if you don't have a lot of locks? And um, what can you do to still learn and progress? So one of the big things is, a, try different picks. Uh, you could try a different pick and you could just really just kind of get in there and feel for that pin um, <clears throat> and just see what it's doing and really try to see if you can actually tell if it's set or not. And then if you get really good at tapping the key pin <clears throat> to see uh, if it's loose once you set the driver pin, if that key pin is still loose, you can kind of get it to bounce up and down and you can feel what that's like. If you really know what that feels like, then as you progress up to a difficult lock, you're really gonna understand when you set a pin and when that key pin is loose. <clears throat> uh, so I would encourage you just to kind of get in there and poke around on those pins and learn something about the lock. Um, quick shout out here to, let's see, who was it? Uh, I don't know how to say this, uh, Bantanakun, a uh, Reddit user, he said he had a problem with the M5, so we're going to pick this today. Um, <clears throat> but you know, if you're kind of stuck on a lock, then don't give it a whole lot of attention. Give it you know, 10 minutes uh, and then just totally switch up your technique. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be because you are tensioning wrong, probably too hard. Um, so once you find the binding pin, maybe fluctuate your tensioning a little bit but you know if you just learn about it if you get in there and just set one pin and then uh, feel how that key pin uh, feels then that's that's gonna probably teach you um, the other thing I wanted to note was if we can find one here like this key well that's not a really good example maybe this key not that great of an example either but <clears throat> sometimes a number one pin uh, will be a really high uh, pin and you really got to pry up on it really high to set it so you got to kind of be prying way up and way up and then bam it's set but that looks pretty exaggerated right but uh, so I would say don't forget about pin one a lot of times you know kind of running through it you're like oh all these feel good and I'm lost in it go back to pin one and check pin one it's a common mistake uh, just because it's right there um, <clears throat> We'll pick the master, the M5, the master M5 here. Um, it's a trickier kind of keyway though. Um, so, you know, if you had, uh, if you have a, a steep hook, you got to come in from the side, right? Uh, and a 25 thousandths is kind of thick and it rubs up on the wording. So I like 18 thousandths. Um, <clears throat> I like to approach the M5 with a very short hook one, and uh, I just go right in top there. Uh, I'll show a little bit closer to that. Um, <clears throat> so other than you know playing around inside the lock, learning something about it, if you uh, can get multiples, multiples are always a good thing to have just so you can run through those. Um, Reddit user, the fax machine, love that uh, that name by the way. Um, he asked why multiples, uh, especially multiples with removable cores. Well, uh, I guess in my opinion, other than picking them up 
fairly inexpensively. I, uh, I pin them up differently, meaning uh, key pins and driver pins, you know, like my red ones. Those are all six pins and I don't have keys for them because I switch up the key, uh, the key pins to be very, very difficult. And uh, the other ones that do have keys for, those are five pins and I switch up the driver pins on them just to kind of make them interesting. And, and ch changing up the driver pins does affect the way the, the lock uh, approaches. But now my new approach to lock picking is I just, that right there, I'm just gonna, that's my night. You know, if I, if I wanna practice, that's a practice session. Hopefully it'll only take me, you know, 30 minutes. Sometimes it's taking me longer like this one I did the other night. It, eh, some of them held me up. But um, <clears throat> you can get a lot of locks and great. If not, then use what you got and learn from it and progress through there. Um, another really quick shout out to Wish Biscuit. Uh, <laughs> Wish Biscuit did uh, compliment me on my beautiful lock collection. And um, yeah, I've got a lot of locks and I, I like acquiring them more than, um, well, not more than picking them, but sometimes maybe. So, uh, okay, so we started off with like a 141, uh, you, maybe a number three, some other Brinks lock stuff, um, and maybe an M5, maybe a 141. Um, so if you've got those locks, that's good. Another good lock to maybe keep an eye out for would be the Master 570. Uh, it's a great lock, but it's kind of a harder lock. Uh, some of them are really easy, some of them aren't. But uh, what makes it difficult is it's, it's usually got you know three or four spools in there, and it's a dead core and a dead shackle. So you've got to manipulate the core and drive it back and forth instead of letting it tension itself. <clears throat> so um, what do you do when you get stuck uh, and you're plateaued or you don't have enough locks? Play with the ones that you do have and just learn something from them and just take it once at a time because sometimes it's not all about getting it open, right? So we're gonna try to move right back over here into the frame and pick this M5, uh, moderate tension on it. And hopefully I'm in frame here and we're just gonna slide right in. Oh, and well, so this is the problem. I know what this lock does and it likes to go from back to front. Um, that's another thing you do if you're stuck on a lock and you can't get it open. Instead of going front to back, try back to front. Um, so I set one there in the back and then like the hook like this, I just go right in on top of that, that little ledge of that wording and then I'll go and look for that binding pin. And I always approach a lock like I might not get it open, you know, uh, even though you've picked it before, even though all this other jazz, like you might not get it. And just reset frequently and listen to the pin, see what's happening in there. So front to back. Oh, another good technique here uh, is to take your pick and kind of drag it across the pins to see which one's grabbing. And, you know, that's a good way of working through to see uh, what you know, what, what's, what's going on. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to shut up and pick it now, I think. Second pan one, don't want to forget about it. Yeah. Open. Um, it actually put up a decent little fight there. Um, <clears throat> I would uh, say you know, work this thing front to back, forward, uh, back to front, wh whatever's working for you. Uh, it seemed like the tension needed to be moderate, maybe a little less, uh, not so heavy uh, on this particular one. And uh, I was just kind of 
looking for that binding pin, dragging it, and it would kind of catch and set, and I heard it a definite set, and then moved to the next one. Um, it just progressed through that. Uh, and, you know, don't be afraid to let go of the tension and just uh, start all over again because you could have overset one slightly and you're gonna be stuck on it for a while. So <clears throat> we picked the M5 today. Um, we went over a whole bunch of stuff about uh, how to make it interesting and keep progressing. Um, I'm going to slow the videos down a little bit, meaning I don't want to just, you know, pick this one, pick the 140, pick the number five or the number three, pick an M5, and then boom, just start jumping into the 1100s. I know 1100s are a big jump for some people, but they're actually easier than you would think, so I would suggest you go ahead and try out at it. Um, <clears throat> And when you get a chance to get a vise, uh, get a vise, and then you can start going to cylinders because the cylinders, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of doors out there. So uh, they have uh, the key and knob cylinders and uh, you can get those at like reuse stores or you know construction deconstruction sites or whatever to where you, know, you can hopefully pick these up cheap or locksmith or, or whatever. So anyway, uh, thanks everyone for watching and supporting and all the kind words it's actually helped me a lot kind of progress and change up my practicing techniques and it's, it's just cool to share and hopefully help somebody out so thanks <clears throat>